Hello students, this is Dr. Anita Raj, your chemistry mentor, welcoming you for one more session in metallurgy. In this session, we shall see an important topic, the extraction of iron from its ore. Let us move on into the topic students. So, before going to the topic that is extraction of iron, you should see the different types of iron ores. Okay. So, the first one is hematite and it is Fe2O3. Magnetite, it mainly contains Fe3O4. Siderite, FeCO3. And the next one is iron pyrite FeS2. Okay. So, in this extraction of iron, we are going to make use of this hematite ore, okay, Fe2O3. So, actually this extraction of iron, uh, it, uh, it takes place in different steps. So, the first step is the concentration of the ore. So, we, as we have taken hematite ore, it will be having different types of impurities. So, those impurities has to be removed first. So, it will be undergoing different types of processes, okay. So, the first step is the concentration of the ore. So, before concentrating the ore, the ore should be crushed into small pieces that is between 2.5 to 5 centimeter size, okay. And then it should be washed with a stream of water, okay. Uh, by flushing with water, we will be washing the ore and then after crushing and washing, it will be concentrated. Actually, for concentrating this iron ore, we make use of this, uh, this technique that is magnetic separation technique. See, this magnetic separation uh, technique as I have already dealt in my previous video. So, let me share the link of this uh, video that contains this magnetic separation technique in my description box. Please make use of this. So, the next step is the uh, preliminary roasting or calcination. Okay. So, let us see what happens here. See, the concentrated ore is then subjected to calcination after concentration. Okay. After concentrating, the concentrated ore is subjected to calcination so that the impurities gets oxidized and removed as volatile gases. Okay. So, what are the different types of impurities that could be seen in this iron ore, sulfur, phosphorus, then Fe2O3. Okay. And these, these are the different types of impurities that can be present in the ore so these uh, impurities will be oxidized first okay so the sulfur it undergoes oxidation and it forms sulfur dioxide it forms a sulfur dioxide and it's a gas since it is a gas it undergoes uh, uh, volatilization or it escapes out and the next one is phosphorus this phosphorus combines with oxygen and it forms phosphorus pentoxide okay p2 O5. So, this P2O5 is also a gas and is to, this also will be going out. Since these uh, gases, volatile gases are going out, the ore becomes dried, okay. The ore gets dried and it will be, it will become porous in nature. What do we porous? Porous means the holes, you can see holes in the ores, okay. And now, uh, we have removed sulfur and phosphorus as oxides, right. Next, if suppose hydrated ferric oxide is present, hydrated ferric oxide Fe2O3 3H2O is present it gets dehydrated and Fe, if suppose FeCO3 is present it decomposes to FeO okay if suppose ferric oxide dehydrated ferric oxide is then there it gets undergoes dehydration means the water molecules will be getting removed okay so that we will be getting Fe2O3 plus three molecules of water see this water molecules will be escaping as water vapor now this if suppose if the ore has FeCO3 it undergoes decomposition to form FeO okay this FeCO3 will be undergoing decomposition and it forms a FeO okay plus carbon dioxide right so this carbon dioxide will also escape right now the next See this ferrous oxide, okay, the ferrous oxide if present gets oxidized to ferric oxide. This prevents the formation of ferrous silicate during smelting. See this ferrous oxide, this should not be there, okay, this ferrous oxide should not be there. This will be undergoing oxidation to form ferric oxide. Since it is getting converted to ferric oxide Fe2O3, this will be getting prevented from forming the ferrous silicate. If suppose if the ore is having silica particles, sand soil particles, SiO2, this FeO will be uh, re reacting with the SiO2 and it forms a ferrous silicate. Okay? So, in order to avoid the formation of ferrous silicate, this ferrous oxide formed will be getting oxidized to form ferric oxide. It will be getting converted to ferric oxide. Okay? So, this FeO will be combining with oxygen and it forms a ferric oxide Fe2O3 okay so if it is converted to Fe2O3 this will not combine with silica to form ferrous silicate understood thus we can prevent the formation of ferrous silicate okay as a slag understood students
so the next step is smelting so the first one is concentration next one is calcination and the next one is smelting okay so what happens during smelting the calcinated ore is then mixed with coke and limestone and is fed into the blast furnace okay and hot air is blown through the bottom of the furnace and this smelting takes place here okay in this blast furnace okay and actually i'm going to explain the features of this blast furnace see here this blast furnace is a huge cylindrical tower it has a huge cylindrical tower made of steel and inside the cylindrical tower it is lined with the fire clay bricks okay it will be li lined with fire bricks now the upper part of this blast furnace and the lower part of the blast furnace are narrow in shape when compared to this one and this one see this is a little broad and this is narrow okay and uh, obviously at the top there is a cup and cone feeder there is a cup and cone feeder in order to feed the charge what do you mean by charge charge is nothing but it's a mixture of ore limestone and coke in order to feed this charge this is called as charge in order to feed this charge this uh, at the topmost part that is upper part there we have a cup and cone feeder okay and obviously at the top again there is an opening or an exit in order to remove the exhaust gases what do you mean exhaust gases waste gases okay and at the bottom there are two uh, inlets okay two inlets are there openings in order to blow the hot or oh, a uh, hot air inside this uh, furnace not to blow the hot air inside there is two openings and these openings are called as tires t u y e r e s tires okay and again at the lower part of the furnace uh, two tapping holes are there one tapping hole is to remove the molten iron formed and the next uh, tapping hole is to remove the solid waste understood so these are all the different features found in the uh, blast furnace okay this is blast furnace right so now we are going to see the various reactions that are taking place inside the blast furnace okay see actually in this blast furnace we have different zones okay so the last one is the combustion zone right and this one is the reduction zone okay and next to this reduction zone we have this slag formation zone and the next one is the zone okay so that is the uh, uh, last the one which is called as the zone of fusion okay so the last zone so these are different uh, zones and in these different zones we have different types of reactions okay so let us see what happens in the lower most zone that is the combustion zone okay see it is the lowest zone and it is maintained between 1775 kelvin to 2200 kelvin 200 kelvin okay this is the lower most zone and what happens here the coke burns in air forming carbon dioxide so we are uh, feeding with the coke is it not so what happens the coke will be start, uh, starting to burn in the presence of oxygen and it forms carbon dioxide okay it forms uh, carbon dioxide <coughs> Now this reaction is an exothermic reaction. So 393 kilojoules of energy will be released. Since this much amount of energy is released, this reaction is called as exothermic reaction. Since lot of heat is released and the temperature reaches nearly 2170. Okay. Now here the temperature of this combustion zone reaches 2170. Now what happens is the carbon dioxide which is formed here in this combustion zone, it starts rising up. It starts moving up okay when it starts to rise up it reacts with the rest of the coke and it gets reduced to carbon monoxide which gets reduced to carbon monoxide the coke see the coke is made up of carbon okay so the carbon dioxide which is formed here rises up and it starts to heat the coke or the carbon which is present in the in this area and this will be again getting converted to this uh, coke will be getting converted to carbon monoxide actually this reaction is an endothermic reaction see the first reaction is exothermic uh, endo this is endothermic the first one is exothermic and this is endothermic here the temperature of the blast furnace rises whereas during endothermic the temperature of the coke bed falls down understood students now let's let's see what's happening in the reduction zone actually reduction zone this is the reduction zone and this is the uppermost uh, part of the furnace okay this reduction zone is the uppermost part of the furnace and the temperature varies between 520 to 975 kelvin okay the uppermost mean 1075 okay kelvin now what happens in this uppermost layer 
see the oxides of iron is reduced to iron in this zone understood here coke is getting converted to carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and in this uppermost layer that is reduction zone the oxides of iron will be getting converted to iron okay so let us see the different types of reactions taking place here this fe2o3 in the presence of carbon monoxide see here the carbon monoxide is formed is it not this carbon in the presence of carbon monoxide this gets converted to fe3o4 fe3 O4 plus carbon dioxide this gets converted to carbon dioxide see if you want to balance here how many ion is there 3 into 2 6 okay so 3 here so we can put 2 here right 2 fe3 okay and what happens in the next reaction this fe3o4 which is formed will again react with carbon monoxide and this gets converted to iron okay this gets converted to iron plus carbon dioxide okay carbon dioxide and here this 3 and here we can have 4 in order to balance the equation ok now what happens this Fe2O3 if up again if there is a little more Fe2O3 this will be reacting with carbon monoxide and it forms the uh, if it forms ferrous oxide ok Fe oh it gets converted to ferrous oxide plus carbon dioxide this is what taken happening in this reduction zone ok in this reduction zone these are the different types of reactions taking place ok and now the iron is formed in this reduction zone is it not the iron formed in this zone is called as the sponge iron understood this iron is called as the sponge iron ok the iron formed in the reduction zone is called as the sponge iron and it moves down slowly in the furnace see the iron is formed here and it moves slowly down the furnace ok and it we started to collect we can collect it through this one yeah? so sponge iron understood students so let us see what is going on in the slag formation zone so let us that this is the uh, next zone that is the slag formation zone and it is the lower zone of the reduction zone so which is reduction zone this is reduction zone lower zone of reduction zone uh, next to reduction zone at the lower most part of the reduction zone okay this is the lower most part of the reduction zone and it is maintained between 1070 to 1570 kelvin 1070 to 1000 so in between this area understood students so it is the lower zone of the reduction zone maintained between 1070 to 1570 kelvin here what happens here the limestone present in the charge decomposes to calcium oxide see what is the charge it is ore plus limestone plus coke is it not so coke is undergoing reaction in the combustion zone and the iron started to react in the reduction zone and the limestone is there is it not this limestone starts to react or undergoes decomposition to calcium oxide in this slag formation zone in this zone understood so calcium carbonate now what happens to calcium carbonate at 1270 kelvin this gets converted to calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide gets converted to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and now what happens this calcium oxide acts as a flux what do you mean by a flux flux is a substance that is added to remove the impurities in the form of slag okay so flux is a substance which is added to remove the impurities in the in the ore in the form of a slag okay so this calcium oxide acts as a flag flux and combines with silica so silica is an impurity and it forms calcium silicate okay this calcium this is calcium oxide and this is silica so calcium oxide acts as a flux okay this acts as a flux and this is an impurity so this is getting converted to calcium silicate or to calcium silicate and this is otherwise called as slag understood students so this is what happening in the slag formation zone so now let us see what is happening in the zone of fusion so it is above the last zone that is combustion zone it's just above the combustion zone so okay. we can see the combustion zone here so reduction zone here slag formation zone here so next in between the combustion zone and the slag formation zone there lies the zone of fusion understood see the zone of fusion is maintained between the temperature 1475 to 1777 kelvin 5 kelvin okay it is just above the combustion zone okay so the iron which has already absorbed carbon silicon phosphorus and magnus melts at 1570 kelvin and collects at the bottom of the furnace so it will be collected at the bottom of the furnace iron will be getting collected at the bottom of the furnace slag also melts okay the slag that is calcium silicate also will be melt will be melting but being lighter 
since it is being lighter than iron it floats over the molten iron and prevents oxidation of the molten metal okay so here the iron comes down molten iron comes will be coming down and the slag will also be coming down but it will be floating over the molten iron okay thereby it prevents the molten iron from oxidation and this molten metal will be collected uh, uh, through this tapping hole and the slag will be collected through this tapping hole out from the furnace time to time okay through the separating tapping holes understood students this is how the extraction of iron takes place through uh, this blast furnace with through various different steps okay well fine students you might have understood what i have taught today let me meet you with another important topic in my next video until then it's dr anitra signing off from you thanks for watching